everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name's Amina and today we are talking PhD and funding. Now, this is probably one of the most asked questions that I get landing into my inbox every single day. How to find PhD programs that are funded in the UK. Now there are a couple of say maybe secret ways I guess to find PhD funded programs apart from just using for example the obvious findaphd.com. There are a couple of other ways that I've come across PhDs that loads of other people hadn't known about at the time and these are for both UK or home students, uh, European students or even international students that you just have to kind of filter it according to which group you fall into but you can definitely get funding regardless of which group you fall into. Now a PhD if you didn't know is either funded or self-funded. So self-funded means that you are paying the fees yourself, you are paying for the equipment yourself, you are paying for any conference fees, any expenses, everything's on you. Which is why in the STEM field, so in the sciences in particular, PhDs are almost always funded. And I'd highly recommend you to, unless you've got, unless you're a billionaire and can afford it, I'd highly recommend you to look for funded PhD programs because it really covers a lot of overhead costs if you were to go on a conference, if you were to spend money on equipment especially when it comes to lab equipment and your tools and your your things that you're using in the lab these things cost a lot of money and if you don't come with funding then you may have to pay for that yourself in the UK a PhD stipend is not considered a salary so it is not taxed it's tax-free because you're still a student essentially which I know is a bit different to maybe at the US but in the UK you are absolutely still a student just like any other 18 year old who's in university which has its obviously its positives and its negatives so you're, you're definitely not faculty or anything along those lines but the good thing about that is that it means that you're not starting to pay your student loans off as of yet you're able to save every penny that you get or spend it as you wish but in the sense that you're not being taxed or you're not having a pay cut and although the pay the stipend may seem a bit low like I said you're not taxed so it kind of balances out and it kind of equates to about the starting salary of a fresh graduate so it actually works out pretty well in London um, I would say it ranges from around sort of 19 20 thousand a year to I've seen up to sort of 30,000 for, for really top programs like Cancer Research UK. So that's a really good salary, like I said, considering it's not considered a natural salary and it's not taxed. So that is something that, again, people don't tend to know and, and sort of comes as a surprise. So anyway, I post every Wednesdays and Sundays. Let's get right into this. I'm going to show you the four top ways that I look for PhD programs and that I always recommend that students look for when they're looking for PhDs. And so let's, let's get started. So the number one, and this is probably not a surprise to anyone, is using Find a PhD. PhD.com and that is where I found my PhD. You can also find a masters.com as well on the I think sister website but findaphd.com is a great resource and I've actually got it here in front of me and I'll put it over here actually sort of me going through it as I speak. So findaphd.com is a really lovely way of sort of filtering all the PhD programs that there are out there. Now universities tend to, they, they all have sort of I guess a contract or a relationship with findaphd.com and they tend to advertise their PhDs on the platform. And so sometimes what you'll find is even if you are on the university website, it will kind of say, um, I, I think it says something along the lines of powered by findaphd.com. So the results would be very similar. And the nice thing about it is that you're able to sort of, you're able to filter by discipline. So I'm going to stick to um, the biological and medical sciences, but you can really choose any discipline you like. And even within that, you can go into even more depth and choose a subject. So I can, for example, say I'm interested in forensic science. There's eight hits right now. I can say marine biology. I can say dentistry and technology, whatever you want. If you know specifically what you want to do, then you can always hit that in and look for a PhD in that program. I think I went for cancer biology, if I'm not mistaken, um, and I think neuroscience when I was looking, and there are so many for neuroscience. I think neuroscience is probably, yeah, definitely the highest one right there, but you can, you know, kind of pick out disciplines like that. But in terms of funding, the thing that I like about findaphd.com is that you can select by funding. So you can say, I am self-funded, I'm a UK student, I'm a European student, I'm non European and kind of pick out like that the different programs that are applicable for the different groups of people. Now altogether there's 645 for non-European students and there's 876 for European students so actually the number isn't hugely different and I find that people tend to think that if you're international it's a lot harder to get a PhD. There is more competition yes but actually funding doesn't necessarily differ too much. Uh, I think it's more about your experience and sort of what you have to offer to the table. My lab I remember had 
sort of three or four non-European PhD students and it wasn't a problem at all and they were amazing and my supervisor got visas for them and you know it worked out well so it's not always about being a UK or European student to be able to get into the UK. So yeah you can kind of filter like that and you're able to pick out uh, funded programs and like I said it shows you exactly how much you get, what universities are, um, how to apply when the deadlines are etc. That is the first way. The second way of finding a PhD, a funded PhD, is through university websites. So directly through the website. So this requires a bit more work because obviously, you know, if you might be interested in every university in the UK, so you're going to be going through loads of websites. It does take some time, but I do think you sometimes do find some very special and unique results that you won't necessarily find on findaphd.com. Now, in order to do this, you need to look at two different parts of the website. The first is you want to look at sort of PhD or sometimes it's in a graduate school vacancy part. Now, it differs for every university and I obviously can't show you exactly where it is for every university but I, I will leave some links down below for sort of the London UCL Kings Imperial those ones as those are the ones that I know best but usually they fall under sort of vacancies for graduate schools or sometimes actually they're under studentship so those are where sort of your scholarships are your stipends are so they know that there's this stipend that they give out and there's a scholarship that you can apply for every single year and it's accompanied by a program so it's not necessarily a program that has money but they have money and they want to give it to someone for a program. That's why it's on the scholarship website. And again, let me show you some examples right now. I am on UCL's studentships website and this is from their graduate degrees, research degrees and then studentships. So you kind of have to do a little bit of groundwork to find them. The pages are not very clear but if you do want to get some help just feel free to email someone from the graduate school and say hi I'm looking for a list of where your PhD programs are. Someone will give you, give you a link for that so that's not something to worry about at all. And so what you can do is if I'm looking right now this one's powered by findaphd.com so the results will probably be the same but again you can kind of see how all their PhDs are listed. The same thing for again if I look at King's they have their funding and scholarships and this is in the Centre for Doctoral Studies section so like I said it's not going to be the same for every single one so you do need to have a little bit of a hunt through their graduate school website which can take some time but it is there I promise you. And so if I look right now there are one two three four there's five different PhD scholarships that are currently running. I'm going to go to one of them. There's a King's China Council Scholarships and it says that what they do here is they have a, a connection with China Scholarship Council to help PhDs pursue degrees at King's College and, and China and there's up to a hundred scholarship awards available for the 2021-2022 competition. A hundred. So I'm guessing then there's a page you can go to. Let's take a look at this. So this is now closed, but they open again at the end of this year. Okay, not bad. They pay you 1,200 every single month and it's up to four years. Okay, interesting. But yeah, that's kind of one way to do it. That would not be on findaphd.com because it's not a particular program that you are applying for, a particular sort of PhD. You're applying for a scholarship, which then would provide you with a PhD sort of supervisor and then you'd find out what project you want. And in this case, there's 100. So it's, it's a massive like organization that has scholarships that they want to provide. So definitely take a look at university sort of scholarship websites. It definitely has links that I didn't see elsewhere. And they have loads of these really cool sort of connections with international universities as well. I knew someone doing this one in China with Kings and she sounded like she was enjoying it and had such a good time. So yeah, I highly recommend doing something maybe like half two years in the UK, two years somewhere else. The third place is looking on job vacancy websites. Now this is probably you probably haven't thought about this. Let me know if you have because well done you. But actually just searching on websites where you find jobs. Like I said, this isn't a job, but they do list PhDs on job vacancy websites such as indeed.com. And again, let me take a look at indeed.com to show you what, what I found when I was looking. So if you look at indeed.com and you search, search for PhD student jobs, I'll leave the link for this down below so you can go directly to it. There are loads of them and actually the salary is what they consider a style stipend so yeah it shows you how many shows you all the PhDs basically nine days ago from Nottingham Teddington London PhD student at ooh at Facebook interesting didn't know they, they did that internships now the one thing to remember is that on indeed.com you're not gonna the results are not gonna be as sort of clean you might find I'm looking right now there's a graduate scheme so irrelevant there's an internship program at McLaren 
okay interesting there's like loads of internships and like research positions that aren't necessarily PhDs so be a bit cautious but it's really obvious and I'll like I said, I'll leave the link for it down below and I just searched for this and I came up with 786 jobs so off 786 they're not all PhDs you are gonna have some that aren't but I do like how you can find different things you know you might be searching for a PhD and end up with an internship and also some programs are, are sort of in collaboration with some companies like automobile companies or for example I think there's one I just saw yeah so like Facebook that you wouldn't find that on Kings uh, on website that is something where you know you kind of have to know that is going on and so that's really cool to be able to find that actually I'm actually really interested in that um, another website that I like to look at so job vacancy so indeed.com also Glassdoor and lastly um, LinkedIn and again you know LinkedIn is somewhere that you go to find jobs but they do have listings for PhD programs as well and like I said it makes sense it makes sense for it to be on these websites because ultimately you're getting paid it's postgraduate so it is you know in that domain so let's take a look at LinkedIn LinkedIn have 279 results for PhD students in the UK and you just have to go through them really there's one from five hours ago at the University of Sussex which sounds really interesting for 20 or September this year there's one at Cambridge University the Facebook one came up again <laughs> oh there's an internship at Amazon for machine learning so actually one thing that I found one thing that I like about PhDs are in that are in collaboration with companies is that you are almost guaranteed a job with them afterwards obviously you know if you did well and you, you got through it a lot of the time I found that these companies like to keep you on and they've got a space for you so you know being able to work at Amazon or being able to work at you know Facebook or whatever means that you have that position there where you're able to continue and you know kind of grow on what you did during your PhD so yeah this is really really interesting and another thing that I find is when you do when you look at job vacancy websites you find jobs that are applicable for PhDs so you might find like even though it's not a PhD studentship or, or funding you'll find a job that is looking for PhD students so you can make a bit of money on the side as well once you do get into your program so that's really cool and then the last way that I look for PhDs is by directly approaching supervisors now this is probably the hardest way which is why I put it last but it does work supervisors have got money they do have money left over from previous projects that they might have not have spent they may have applied for a grant and they haven't yet got around to maybe putting out a post or they're just they're looking for someone but not actively they wouldn't mind having someone join the way to do this is literally just by emailing directly but being really specific and I think I'll probably do a video on how to do this because it, I can't, you know it can't go into too much detail right now but you need to be really specific which is why you can't just email every supervisor there is if there's someone that you know that you might have been lectured by that you might have been recommended recommended to by someone that has worked in the lab before or you know you're on King's website and you're like oh this project looks so good what this person's working on looks really really good I would love to email them and see if they know if they have anything available for me literally just emailing them saying hi my name is so and so this is my experience this is what I do this is my interest this is the intention that I have I want to start a PhD do you have the funding to enable me to start with you sometimes they'll say well actually we're putting in an application this month so we'll find out in the next two months I'll keep you updated I've you know we'll see they might say come and visit the lab and we have a little chat you might say no but I do know my collaborator who's looking for someone in a similar field and I think it's really I, I would probably limit it to like five not too many supervisors and not too many PIs just because it's you don't you know you kind of don't want to end up with like 20 people saying replying back to you it's it's just it's better to be clear and better to be kind of direct with what you're saying and kind of who you're emailing but for the most part this does work and these these PhDs are not advertised if you are to to go in with an idea and suggest an approach and suggest a hypothesis and suggest something interesting and show them that you're enthusiastic you never know you might be offered you know an introduction or you might be offered something in the near future so I definitely recommend doing this and I, I again I think it's an underrated way to find funded PhDs so I hope that was helpful those are the four ways that I would look straight away and they're probably the only ways that I would look for find a PhD funded PhD whether you're an international student or home UK or EU student let me know if you use any of these ways or if you are using those ways and you're you know you've had an interview or, or it's worked for you I'd love to hear your comments down below and, and share them with the group so people can kind of be encouraged to, to kind of you know maybe dive into the deep end and like I said in the, in the beginning I post every Wednesdays and Sundays so if you want to see more videos like this and don't forget to leave me a subscribe um, and don't forget to leave me a thumbs up all the engagement it really just helps with boosting my videos up and it just helps me know what you guys want to see from me as well so 
would love for you to support and to continue supporting my channel and thank you for sticking around to the end and i'll see you guys in my next video bye